Hello everyone, I'm Property Success and today we are going to be looking at are you a Judas Iscariot? Now, we know that Judas Iscariot sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. So, what are you selling the Jesus that's in you for? Now, in the good old days, Jesus walked on earth. But today, Jesus is in us. Jesus is in you. Before Jesus ascended to the Father, he said, I will ask of my Father that you may send you a helper and that helper will dwell within you. And we know that in the day of the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended and sat upon each and every one that was in the upper room praying. And ever since, every person has come in contact with the person of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit is your helper and he dwells within you. Now, Every time you choose to do something else other than to fulfill your calling, other than to follow the being that's inside you because he's there to guide you. Well, if the Holy Spirit speaks and says to you, do X and you decide to do Y, what you're doing is you are selling Jesus for that which you are doing. Judas may have decided to take 30 pieces of silver, but what are you selling Jesus for? Now, quickly, let us go to the book of Romans 11:29. It reads as follows. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Now, God has called each and every one of us and that call is irrevocable. If you live this life and go into eternity, that gift and that calling, that which you were called into, it will not be revocable. This is what you'll be asked of when you come into eternity. This is where the fire of God will scan you to see that have you fulfilled your calling. To what extent have you fulfilled your calling? Now, when the fire of God will burn through you, everything that is not of God will be burned away as chaff. Only that which is of God will be left. The hours that you clocked here on earth, pleasing your bosses, will not matter. The time that you spent serving your pastor to those people who are bench warmers and are pleased with carrying the pastor's Bible, that will be irrelevant. It will not count. What will be relevant in eternity is the word of God that is in you, your soul. That will be worth saving. But God cannot save your soul if it doesn't have anything of him in it. If it has nothing, then it will be casted off into fire. Even if you were tongue-speaking fire, cracking believer. You see. So, let's go to the book of Revelations 4. Revelations 4.11 reads as follows. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory, honor, power. For you created all things, and for your pleasure they were created and exist. Now, the four beings in heaven and the 24 elders... They are singing a song and in this song they are revealing something unto us that all oh, were created to please the Father. They exist to please the Father. An animal in the wilderness, it is created and it exists to please the Father. Grass is created and exists to please the Father. Me and you are created and exist to please the Father. So what I want us to do is to take a stock take and ask ourselves, what have we done this week, this month? This year, today, in the past five years, what have you done to please the Father? What have you done that aligns to your calling? Because that is what matters in eternity. So what I want to bring to your attention here is that we are not of this world. We belong in eternity where we will live forever and evermore. Here in this world, everything is temporal. It's just a phase we go through to work our way into eternity, to walk our way into that narrow gate. The question is, what have you done to make yourself qualify to walk into that narrow gate? Now you see the rich man when he asked Jesus, Jesus, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, sell all your goods. Sell all the things that you, you got yourself distracted with, the riches and all of that, and come and follow me. This is what Jesus is asking out of each and every one of us. Forsake all else and follow me. Now, if your job is standing between you and Christ, forsake it. If your family is standing between you and Christ, forsake it. 
anything that challenges your walk with Christ, forsake it. Why? Because this is the only thing that will matter in eternity. It is the walk of Christ. That's why Jesus said, go and sell all that you have. All that you have, go and sell it and come and follow me. That rich man refused to sell everything. That rich man refused to let go of distractions. And these are the things that will cause him not to enter in the narrow gate. Could your job keep you from entering that narrow gate? Are you a Judas Iscariot? Are you selling Jesus for your job? Are you selling Jesus for that lovely paycheck of overtime hours? Because some of you are working overtime hours and you don't have to. You can choose to go home, spend time with God in your secret place. And the God that you spend time with in the secret place will reward you openly. Now, let's understand something briefly about your irrevocable calling. Let's go to Matthew 19, 28. It reads as follows. So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that in the generation when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones judging the tribes of Israel. Here Jesus is speaking with his 12 disciples. He's telling his 12 disciples that in the life to come, you will sit with me on 12 thrones and we will be judging the tribes of Israel. This is the call that is irrevocable. That when you are here on earth, you need to walk in fulfilling that call because when it comes to eternity, you need to be qualified to sit on that throne, to sit on that seat next to Jesus and judge the 12 tribes of Israel. But let me show you what Judas Iscariot didn't know and what Judas Iscariot did. Acts 1 verse 20, it reads as follows. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his dwelling be desolate and let no one live in it and let another take his office. Now, Judas Iscariot sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Now, the ministry that Judas Iscariot had was given to another, but his dwelling, his dwelling, that is the place he is called into in the life after. That is the house that he's called into in eternity. Let's read again, Acts 1.20. It says, let his dwelling be desolate and let no one live in it. So, just as Jesus said in Matthew 19.28 that you 12 are going to sit with me and judge the 12 tribes of Israel. What that means is Judas Iscariot will not be there. The one that replaced Judas Iscariot cannot sit in that seat because he was not called to sit in that seat he's having his own seat so he cannot sit in judas's seat because if he sits in judas's seat his seat will be vacant whatever ministry that god had called him into initially that's the seat that he will be fulfilling that means that when you go into eternity we will see Judas Iscariot. we will see jesus we will see the 11 apostles of jesus christ occupying their 11 seats, but one seat will be vacant. That seat is the seat of Judas Iscariot. His ministry on earth was given to another, but his dwelling will be desolate. His seat cannot be filled in eternity. So ensure that whatever you do here on earth and you spend time doing here on earth, you are not selling your irrevocable calling. It is irrevocable in this life and the life after. Many people are called to be apostles, prophets, teachers, you name it, whatever God has called you into, but you are happy just serving your pastor. No one in the Bible is called to serve their pastor. No one in the Bible is called to be a bench warmer. If it, that's what pleases you, you will find yourself in eternity being a Judas Iscariot. You might not end up in hell, but your seat will be vacant. So, without further ado, let us ask the Father to help us to walk in the fulfillment of our ministry and of our calling because the life after is the one that matters because you live forever and ever and ever. This one that we are in, it's like a speck of dust. It passes by very fast. 
So, without further ado, let's bow our heads and pray. Spirit of the living God, we ask, Lord, that you help us, Jesus, to walk in the fulfillment of our ministry, that you help us, Lord, that Jehovah God will follow you. We follow you, Jesus, on that narrow road for you. Said, Lord, if anyone must follow me, they must forsake all else, take up their cross and follow you. So help us, God, in Jesus' name, to take up our crosses and follow you. Let your hand, Heavenly Father, rest heavily upon your people. Let your hand, Jehovah, Oh God, rest heavily upon your children, oh God. Let that anointing, Jehovah God, that we once lost with you, Lord, in Eden, let it be restored unto us, oh God, in Jesus' name. Jesus cried out on his last days. He said, and now, oh God, glorify me with yourself. Heavenly Father, glorify your children. Glorify us, oh God, with yourself, that we may walk worthy of our office, that we may walk worthy of our calling. In the name of Jesus, we thank you you heavenly father and we receive of this gift in jesus name help us oh god now and forevermore amen and amen if you are blessed by this message please like share and subscribe and stay blessed and by all means continue asking the father to help you to walk worthy of your calling because this life does not hold weight in eternity but what you do pertaining to your calling will matter in eternity. Stay blessed always. Amen.